Welcome to Chemisode on Medicine. Um, this is the last um, video podcast for Unit 3, and it's to do with medicine, and this is the penicillin part of this podcast. Last lesson, we looked at um, aspirin. This one, we're going to look at penicillin and how it came about and some of the features of um, medicines in general. So let's have a look at pen penicillin. I'm going to talk quickly about how penicillin was found. Um, it's a story that um, some of you might know. Uh, it's to do with a guy called, I think it's Alexander Fleming. Um, he was a scientist. He was looking at bacterial growth um, and trying to grow different um, bacterias. And he had a whole bunch of agar plates that he was growing this bacteria called, um, I think it was Staphylococcus. I think that was the um, bacteria he was trying to grow. The reason he was trying to look at that is because it's a it's a bad disease, uh, so a bacteria that causes disease um, and infections. One day, or um, he was on holidays for a couple of weeks, and he came back to his lab, and he was about to throw out all these um, agar plates that had been just been growing while he was on holidays. What he did before he threw them out was he um, called his assistant over and said, "Oh, I just want to show you what these." Um, plates look like, what these bacterial plates look like. And he got some of them out and he showed them and what he noticed was there was this white mold growing on the, the bacteria plates as well. So obviously there was an area where he expected um, bacteria, but there was also this random white mold. So he was showing his um, lab assistant that and he said, this is quite interesting actually, um, because what's happened around the white mold is there is a ring where this other bacteria is not growing. So this um, Staphylococcus bacteria is growing where I've put it. However, when this white mold comes around, around this white mold is not growing there at all. So what um, Mr. Fleming looked at and thought about or hypothesized is that I'm not going to throw these out because it looks like something in this white mold is producing something that's killing this other bacteria around here. So what we look at, what, what happens, he um, started to analyze this bacteria that started growing there by chance and trying to work out what the chemical was or what the molecule was that was stopping the growth of this other bacteria that, um, was, that could cause infections. So what he found out is that there was a molecule that was there and he called that molecule penicillin. So And penicillin, he found out, um, when he called it penicillin, this molecule, it could kill the bacteria Staphylococcus, which was causing a lot of bad infections in other people. The found that it wasn't just one type of molecule, it was actually a few types of molecules, but they all had a general structure. If you look at these two here, these are two types of penicillin. Okay, If I cut it at this area here, just after this um, carbon to oxygen double bond, you'll notice that everything on this side is exactly the same. So what he saw was those molecules, what they're um, different molecules, even though they have this, the same region, they'll do similar effects. They'll have similar effects on the body. So the idea with medicines is that similar structured molecules do similar things. What you have is the idea of a core molecule, a core area. So this R group here could mean anything else at all. But what the um, thing that actually does do the job is this core molecule here. Okay, So we have the idea of medicines. If you have a medicine or a molecule that looks similar to other things, we can actually say that, yep, it will probably react or behave that way in the body in a certain way. Um, what this kind of leads on to is the idea of the this side chain from a core molecule. Now, this important um, idea of this side chain here is that it allows us to change how bacteria sees our molecule. It can disguise our molecule in certain ways. So what we have is the importance of continued research means that as we, we don't just stop with uh, one molecule that does what it's supposed to, 
what can happen if we don't if we stop researching and just keep on using the one same um, compound is that bacteria can build up a resistance to that compound they can realize that yep that thing is going to kill me and they can genetically modify themselves to build up a resistance to that what we do in terms of research and what we try and do to prevent the bacterial resistance is we change the side group of our normal molecule. So the two types of penicillin here that I've got obviously have been changed to, um, well, basically reduce the bacterial resistance for it. Another reason you might change the side chain here is to do with the side effects that a drug has. Um, there's other families of drugs that um, you might know of, like your opiates, that is your codeine, your morphine, and heroin. All of these drugs have the same general structure, but they have slight differences in the um, functional groups that are coming off that general structure. Those slight differences change the side effects that the body feels to it, and it can also obviously um, change the addictiveness of different compounds and everything like that. So what we will look at is medicines generally have the same structure if they're going to do the same job. What we can change is the side chains and that will change how we or different bodies react to different things. Um, in terms of penicillin, um, some people are allergic to penicillin. They can't have it due to their bodies um, giving an allergic reaction to it. What we can administer instead is a variety of penicillin that has a different side chain to it that um, their bodies aren't allergic to. So that's the importance of our side chains here and continued research. We never just rest, we never just say this is the one molecule that's going to work forever. We are always looking at better things to do and to make better things for it. Let's have a look at our basic development of drugs now. This is the last part, so I'll just try and explain it. It's only one slide, but I'll try and give you a bit of detail about what I mean by these dot points here. Basically, in the development of a drug, obviously before, um, we had chance. We had um, theories that um, different types of plants or different types of um, venoms, perhaps um, snake venoms and stuff like that, they had these properties that could cure different diseases. Um, what we then did is we analysed the molecules in those um, plants or in those um, the venoms or in that those types of mixtures and we worked out which compound it was. What we're doing now is we're screening thousands and thousands of molecules, constantly screening to see possible um, effects they might have or possible um, things they could do to help us in the medical um, industry. We don't just, um, we're not screening them by giving them to random people and saying, hey, eat this, see if it works. What we do is we compute a model, um, we use computer modeling to see if these molecules have any resemblance to things that we know work. So if they have the similar structure to things that we know work, and we can also um, computer model them in terms of how they're going to interact with other things in our body as well. So how they interact with um, other bacterias and things like that. We can actually um, model them on a computer. This drives down the cost a little bit because we don't have to um, wait a lot of time. We can actually just like put through million, like thousands and thousands of things and quickly screen them out and say, yes, that doesn't work or this, this could work. Once we work out through our computer modeling system that thinks something might work or it has a possibility of being um, a useful compound or a useful drug, what we then do is we move it into a testing with um, in a petri dish stage. Basically, we look and grow a culture just like um, Alexandra Fleming did um, and test out our um, compound in that environment on just a few cells or just a few bacteria that are growing. Um, if it works there, what we'll move on to is looking at maybe animal testing or testing on trial runs on humans as well. So what we would look at is with that, obviously we've got pressure of animal rights, obviously um, animal rights and basically ethics comes into play with that as well. So in the development of drugs, even though we um, first of all start off with computer modeling, there is going to be a stage where we need to test out the drugs to make sure they work. And obviously, that's going to have um, a big play in um, well 
animal rights and different types of ethics and morals come into play and um, religious beliefs and stuff like that will come into play in terms of the development of the drug. In the de medicine development and the pharmaceutical industry, we have a, a very high cost um, of developing new medicines. Obviously, um, there's a lot of things, screening thousands of molecules, Obviously, you're going to screen tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of things before you work out something that might work. So that's going to have a lot of cost going through all this and research development away. Um, the high cost can also be part of the lab research to do with it. Um, but once you have your high cost, once you've, you've put in the money and you've developed a drug and you've worked out that it works really well, you generally have a very high return if you get a drug that is in demand or can do something that no one else's drug can. So you can actually patent a certain molecule that you have developed. So certain drugs have a patent on them and basically the f um, anytime someone else wants to make that, they have to pay to use your patent. So patent law comes into the development of uh, medicine as well. So I've kind of gone a bit of a tangent in speaking about these, but that's generally things that are um, come into effect when you're developing new drugs where you have a large amount of cost but in the end if you get that one drug that no one else can make obviously you can get a high return so if you make something that's going to cure cancer obviously you'd patent that drug um, and you'd say right if anyone wants to buy this drug that's going to cure cancer um, you have to buy it off me and you can't buy it off anyone else and you have a patent for that so the law comes into it um, a lot as well. So that's the development of medicines. Um, that is the end of Unit 3 now as well. Um, I've gone through the majority of areas of Unit 3. Um, obviously, some of them are audio podcasts. Um, most of the, the, the final ones, like um, going through your organic reactions and um, DNA and biomolecules, that's gone into a, a video style like I've done with this. And I'll soon get on to making Unit 4 ones as well. So um, I'll try and get most of Unit 4 done, hopefully, um, over the holidays, at least the first part of Unit 4. So I'll have a lot of these done by then. Um, yeah, if you have any questions and comments, please um, join the Edmodo group for, this, for Unit 3, and we can discuss that. I'll put on a few extra questions. We have a question of the day on the Edmodo group that you can answer um, and everything like that. All the notes can be found from Edmodo and you can find the um, Chemisode app on the Apple iTunes store as well. That is the end of Unit 3. I hope you did, you've enjoyed it and good luck with your exams and happy studying and all the rest of that. So take it easy and see you in Unit 4. <music>